this example, we want to discuss more of the physical interpretations of these models and these coefficients and how we can discuss between them as we go. So we have three masses and three springs, all of which are identical. We hang one of the masses from each of the springs. We put one spring in the air, leave it to do its thing. We submerge one in water, let it do its thing. Put the other one inside honey and let it do its thing. For each of the masses, we pull them down by 10 centimeters and release. And we're going to watch them over time. This results in three initial value problems, all of which have the same conditions. Y of zero being 10, Y prime of zero being zero. If we're thinking in centimeters, you could also put this as 0.1 if you want to do things in meters. And we get these three equations. 3Y double prime plus 2Y prime plus 5Y is zero. 3 double prime plus 0.1Y prime plus 5Y equals zero. And 3 to Y double prime plus 15Y prime plus 5Y equals zero. We want to know which equation corresponds to which fluid, and how do you know what this should look like? So the main thing here, which makes sense, is that we have a three on the top of each one and a five for the y term. And that makes sense because we're doing identical mass, identical springs. The mass is the coefficient of y double prime, and the spring constant is on the y term. So these should be the same if they are the same mass and the same spring. The difference is in these damping coefficients. And the way you want to think about this is a higher coefficient means more damping or more resistance to motion. So if we look at this, we can see what is going to happen. Out of these three options, air, water, and honey, which should have the least resistance to motion? Well, it's the air. The air is going to have some friction, obviously, but it's not going to have a lot compared to water or honey. If we go to our coefficients, the lowest coefficient here is equation two, which means this should be the ones in the air. Continuing on, the next least resistive thing should be the water, because that's going to be less resistant, obviously, to honey. Honey's going to be super thick and super viscous, so it's going to really restrict motion. So the two here should correspond to water, because it is the next lowest, and then the 15 is going to be the honey because it's super resistive and it's going to be really hard for that object to move at all in the honey. And we know this because of how the higher coefficient relates to resistance to motion, which these should be more viscous and more resistant to motion for the mass in the spring. Now, what do these look like? Well, for that, I want to look at are these over, under, critically damped, and see how that behaves with things. So for air, we see that b squared minus 4ac is 0.1 squared, or 0 0.01, minus 4ac is 60. And that's not going to change for the different components, right? That's going to be the same no matter what, because it's mass times spring constant. And that's very negative, and also very close to negative 60. Which means this will be oscillating a lot, and it will decay very, very slowly. So it's underdamped with a very slow decay. For the water, we have a 2 for that coefficient, which means b squared minus 4ac is 4 minus 60. Still negative. It's now like negative 56. So it's not quite as close to 60, but it's still negative. It's still underdamped, but it's going to have a significantly faster decay than the air one will. And lastly, for honey, we have a coefficient of 15. So b squared minus 4ac is going to be 225 minus 60, which is very positive. And so this is significantly overdamped. Likely to point of a very slow decay to zero because of how overdamped it is. If we were to draw a graph of these solutions, I could guess that they would look something like this. So for the air, if I can start up here, it's going to oscillate at a pretty good clip. And it's going to decay very, very slowly as it goes out. It'll decay eventually and eventually go away, but it's going to do so very slowly. The water will oscillate more slowly than that, but it's going to decay much, much quicker. So it's gone to zero pretty quick. The honey is likely to decay very, very slowly because it's super over damped, but it's going to sort of just not oscillate at all and just sort of eventually maybe kind of sort of get its way down to zero. It'll probably be even slower than that, but as a model, those are the three graphs we're looking at. You're looking at the oscillation with very little decay for the air, the oscillation with more decay for the water, and the no oscillation and slow decay for the honey. That's so we can sort of take a physical problem and analyze what's going to happen based on the data coefficients, as well as relate these coefficients to the actual physical problem that we are dealing with in order to analyze these vibration problems using our differential equation skills.